and welcome to the second week of our administrative law course. This week, we're looking to answer the question, what is an administrative decision? Or in other words, what sorts of government decisions can we review using administrative law? The simple answer to that comes from a case called Griffith University and Tang. I won't go through the facts now because we're going to come across this decision again. But in that judgment, the court said that a reviewable decision is a decision of an administrative nature made under an enactment. The four videos this week are basically going to unpack that statement, one by one. This video looks at the broad concept of jurisdiction, which is kind of a first step before considering the nature of decisions. In the second video, we'll ask what we mean by a decision. The third video asks what we mean when we say that a decision is of an administrative character. And the fourth video asks what we mean when we say the decision is made under an enactment. Crazy, isn't it, that that one little phrase is going to take us four videos to cover. Let's get into it. We need to start this first video by revisiting the concept of jurisdiction. When we talk about the jurisdiction of a court or a tribunal, we're basically talking about the powers of that court or tribunal. Do they have the power to do the things they're being asked to do? Every court and every tribunal in our system of government has a specific jurisdiction. Jurisdiction, rather like the law itself, comes from three sources. First, we have the common law. As you already know, the common law developed over time through history. And some institutions, such as courts, grew up with it. You can't go to England and ask to see the statute that implemented the very first court. These things are lost in history. What we do know, though, through the effect of thousands of cases, is that under the common law handed down through a hundred generations, the superior courts, such as the Supreme Court in each state, have plenary jurisdiction. They can decide pretty much whatever matters they choose. The second source for jurisdiction is the Constitution. So the Australian Constitution created a new court, the High Court, and gave it specific jurisdiction. You might remember this from constitutional law. Essentially, the Constitution says we're creating a new court and these are its powers. The third source of jurisdiction, and the one we need to focus on in this course, is statute. Through statute, the Parliament can do two things. First, it can create new types of court and new types of tribunal. So there never used to be an Administrative Appeals Tribunal, but then along came the Parliament. It passed the Administrative Appeals Tribunal Act 1975, and suddenly the AAT is a thing. Second, the Parliament can pass laws which give powers to courts and tribunals. A good example here is Section 8 of the Administrative Decisions Judicial Review Act 1975, which says the federal court has jurisdiction to hear and determine applications made to the federal court under this act. Why am I even carrying on about all this stuff? Well, if we have a decision that we want to challenge, then we need to challenge it in the right court. There's no point challenging a decision made by a Commonwealth public servant in a state court. There's no point challenging a decision made by a state public servant in the Commonwealth courts. There's no point going to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal regarding a decision which the AAT doesn't have jurisdiction to consider. All this makes a lot more sense when we actually look at one. Let's say that a young woman goes off to apply for a passport so she can go backpacking around Europe. However, it turns out that her name is identical to the name of a person who is on the international register maintained by Interpol. That person, the other person, is an international jewellery smuggler. As a result of mistaken identity, the Department of Foreign Affairs refuses to issue our client with a passport. What can she do? Well, a good place to start is obviously the Australian Passports Act 2005. Section 48A of that Act says that a decision to issue an Australian travel document, which includes a passport, is a reviewable decision. Well, so what? 
Section 49 says that if a reviewable decision is made by a delegate of the minister, so if it's made by a public servant on behalf of the minister, then a person affected by the decision can apply in writing for the minister themselves to review the decision. So our client should write to the minister, explain that she's not an international jewellery thief, and ask the minister to reconsider the decision. Now, let's say the minister reviews the decision and decides that our client is still not getting a passport. Well, then we can go to section 50, where it says that the Australian Administrative Appeals Tribunal can review the decision of the minister. So the Administrative Appeals Tribunal is given jurisdiction to review the decision of the minister. See how it works? What if it was a decision by a Commonwealth officer? but there was no Section 50. What if there was no right to go to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal? Because even though the AAT is entitled to review decisions for more than 400 different pieces of legislation, it's not allowed to review them all. So what about the others? Well, for them, we turn back to the Administrative Decisions Judicial Review Act 1977. For decisions made by Queensland public servants, there's a very similar Queensland Act called the Judicial Review Act, 1992. Get to know these pieces of legislation well. Scroll through them on your phone. Read them on the loo. They will be your bread and butter, your heart and soul, your days and nights during this course. They're a wonderful tale, but they need more dragons. Now, the ADJR Act contains a definition of a decision to which this Act applies. And that definition is, in essence, a decision of an administrative character made under an enactment. Sound familiar? Section 8 of the Act then provides the Federal Court and the Federal Circuit Court with powers to hear applications made under that Act. So can you see how all this works? The power to review decisions doesn't just magically appear out of nowhere. It's all based on statute. The Parliament has decided that these decisions should be reviewed, and the Parliament has granted jurisdiction or power, to the courts and tribunals to review those, those decisions. All of this brings us back to the key question. What do we mean by a decision of an administrative character made under an enactment? In video two, we'll start to work that out by starting at the start. Just what do we mean by a decision? Mm -hmm.